Welcome to the last, last tackle of the season. The Wigan Warriors are our champions for 2016, having won at Old Trafford, beating the Warrington Wolves by 12 points to six. We'll look back at that and review Wayne Bennett's first England squad. It is the last tackle. Joined, as always, uh, by the ever-presence, or nearly ever-presence, uh, Phil Kaplan and uh, Gary Schofield. Boys, Wigan did it. We wrote them off at many, many points this season, Absolutely. but they found a way to win. If I was wearing a hat, I would take it off to them. I thought uh, they were absolutely superb. They, they hung in the game, started it really well. I thought the tempo that they had at the beginning even shocked Warrington a little bit, because you know that uh, they're the fast starters. But Warrington hung in there, took the lead. The game for me changed on that 12 point turnaround just before the hour when Ryan Atkins couldn't give them the two score lead and Wigan went up the other end and, and immediately levelled the match. I just thought the resilience that Wigan showed in the last 20 minutes was an absolute testament to them and afterwards we heard that they were the only 17 players they could have picked. Um, Sean O'Loughlin came off the bench, steadied the ship when he needed to. Fabulous performance. I fully acknowledge that all season I am one of the people that have written them off and yet they showed us all that they were the champion team. Congratulations. They found, they found a way to win to score. As so often they have done, I've watched them a lot of times this year, they've been behind at half-time and ground their way into the game, but I thought they played pretty well, to be fair to Wigan. Yeah, they did. They played, uh, well, semi-final football and grand final football, didn't they? And uh, I think we said, what, five weeks ago when they got beat by Windus 8-6, you know, uh, Wigan quite clearly, they're not going to not only get to the grand final, but not going to win it because they don't score enough points. But what we do know about Wigan is simple. Defence, defence, defence. They stay in games and stay in games. And then when they do get opportunities, because what we can do, will find and what they do find in each game is that they have a 10 or 15 minute spell where they have momentum, don't they? And that's exactly at times what they had there on Saturday. Night. I, th I think they moved, the ball. they moved the ball a bit more than we expected as well. Right from the off, they were looking to, to get the ball away. Nui Salah's offload in the first set of six. I also thought there were a couple of outstanding performances. One from Dan Sargentson. And again, uh, you know, you, you get asked who's, who's the most important player while the game's actually in progress. You don't get to sit back and think about the key moments. You don't get to see the statistics at the time. 276 metres from fullback. That was an astonishing performance. I also thought Lewis Tierney was absolutely outstanding as well, considering first final made a lot of ground, made himself available, was strong. Um, but it, 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 it was an entertaining Wigan performance. They didn't grind down the opposition. They actually played rugby, and I think all credit to them for that but as well. well though, uh, Phil, I think as well, if you look at from Warrington's point of view, they had enough chances. I was mm. here to win two grand finals, didn't they? Mm -hmm. You know, look at Jack Hughes in the first star, certainly yep. uh, Atkins, Gidley, really, so he should have through the, the speculators maybe there. So when you, when you are in grand finals and you create an opportunity, you've got to take them. Warrington didn't do that. It's quite simple. Wigan, they know what it's all about. They know what it's the business end of the season. They know what grand finals are all about. And as we say, Mark, they find a way to win. I mean, that's twice in finals, isn't it, that Warrington have been ahead and, and masters of their own destiny and not found a way to go on and win the game. Um, I think it's been a fantastic season for them. You can't take anything away from the fact that they've had the best attack and they've been involved in all three of the trophies right to the last. Um, but that, there'll be that lingering disappointment that when it got to... Just getting two scores ahead, they couldn't manufacture the play to do it. That, that Atkins, again, I don't no criticism of Atkins at all, but the five men who got across to stop him putting that ball down, that's the kind of thing that wins your grand final. But do you know what as well, what I, what I will say, certainly about with, with, with Jack Hughes and also to Atkins, did you see Bateman against Hull? What did he do five metres out? Dived and let the body take, let the body take the momentum. That's what players have got to learn. When they're around about two or three yards away, just sling your body, just throw your body because they can't stop you. You know, so that could be a learning curve. And, there and to be fair, when right at the end when Westerman broke through and it looked like he even might get them on parity, a brilliant tackle from Gellin and Sargenton just to snuff it out, and make sure he couldn't even have have got the ball out. So I think Wigan did everything you would expect of, of a team that has a desire to just put that silverware on on the uh, sideboard and. Uh, you know, fair play to them. They, they've, they've tasted defeat in the last two and uh, they got. They, I think they thoroughly enjoyed it, taking that cup round on Saturday night. Yeah, they did. Um, the RFL gets a lot of stick, but it felt like a, a big occasion done very well on Saturday. The interesting thing was looking at some of the social media reaction while you were actually at the ground. I thought it was fantastic. I thought the colour was brilliant. We, we had two distinct ends with different colours. I thought the, the music was great, the, the sound, the atmosphere, the pyrotechnics, the flags. I, I thought it was a privilege to be there and you could feel you were at something really big. But there were one or two people on social media saying it doesn't feel like a huge occasion. I think that just says get a ticket and go because it's mm -hmm. totally different when you're actually there. 
it felt like the biggest sporting occasion in England on Saturday. Yeah, it did. I, I, you know, I thought it typified when Robert Hicks gave that penalty. Atkins went 100 yards. They played on the players, and he stood there whistling, and no one could hear him. It was unbelievable <laughs> atmosphere. But it was. Uh, I tell you what, the players did right and all because they couldn't hear the referee's whistle. They couldn't even see the referee because he was just study hard away. I'd love on to know on that play of the ball. Did they all go back the 10 yards? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Well, how far did they go? I love us still at that just well, to see how well, far back they were. It looked all right to me, but uh, but anyway, again, uh, one that uh, went against Warrington's way. But I think overall, for the full 80 minutes, you cannot say that Wigan uh, want the best team and fully deserved it. Josh Charnley gets his try on his what could be his last appearance for now, I'll say, because everyone that seems to leave Wigan comes back yes. eventually. So um, yeah, he signed off on a high. Had an interesting game, didn't he? First mm. half, that a lot was targeted his way and, and, and didn't quite go. But again, that. That combination of the two guys who were leaving Sargent and putting the, the perfect kick through. I think the other thing, looking back on that as well, is um, Matty Smith jumps into dummy half because it's a quick play of the ball and there's nobody there. And it's Smith's awareness to actually get there and ship the ball onto Sargent. And then the lovely little kick through and Charlie does his bit. It, it, it's the stories that we need to spread the sport. Everybody over the last um, couple of days has been talking about Charnley and obviously he's moving on and good luck to him. Um, Sargenton will become the first player from Hemel and play in the, the NRL next season. Um, obviously he also has to play in the, the Four Nations hopefully before he leaves. And, and again, a lot of good news stories came out of that and, and the game itself looked really good. We, we've had another final this year that's gone down to the very last play. You didn't know who was going to win and we can talk and should talk and analyse about the season overall and the standard and has it been good but when we've got down to the million pound game and this match couldn't look any further than they've been fabulous adverts for the sport they have indeed um Scott, great win for Wigan and you feel that they will be bigger and better next year if they don't have as many injuries what about Warrington where do they go from here yeah yeah um again it's when is this scenario going to say well it's their year you know, and they'll learn from this one. And uh, so you could see Tony Smith the disappointment on Saturday night, but he said, well, out of the three trophies that you can win, ours was the lesser one, even though they finished the top of the league. So Warrington, they know what the Challenge Cup means, they know what the Grand Final uh, means. So uh, now it's it's a matter of now taking that next step. Have they got the squad to do it? Yes, they have. They've certainly got a cracker jack in Declan Patton there. Well, I, I would so. query that. Have they, got, have they got the squad to do it? I know that might sound really daft, but... There's been a oh, noticeable I've, drop I've, off I've, in every game when Hill and Sims go off. They haven't got well, yeah, the power well, off the well, bench. Well, well, they, they've, to be fair, they've got Mitchell Dodds to come in who hasn't yeah, played at all point. this year. And I think that's one of the reasons. But I think if you, look, if you look at the squad, certainly that went to Catalans. You know, they've got they've got a big enough squad to, to compete from there. But but again, I'll, I'll I'll ask a question. You know, when Hill and and uh, Sims went off, yeah, it was uh, a, a turnaround, and Wigan really enjoyed it. But why do you have to bring them off? Why do you have to bring them off? They, they, you can tell them, I'll tell you now. Did they want to come off there on Saturday night? No, they didn't. But think, keep keep them on there that, for, six, that for 65 is, minutes. I think Ben Cooper's coming back as well, which is going to help that Mike rotate. Cooper. And Mike Cooper's going to help that rotation. Um, I, I think they'll say, and they need to, to learn from the experience. They've, they've tasted, they've, they've got, yeah, but, yeah, but they've got a lot. Of, no, but they've got a lot of younger kids now that are coming through. Like they, I thought, uh, again, Toby King was fantastic came off the, off the bench and effectively tried to play the Ben Curry role in the second row. Uh, he's played mainly centre. He had a big chance at the end, didn't he, when he yeah. didn't pass? But I think that's all part of the learning experience. People like Patton, the King brothers, Ben Curry in the matches that uh, Wembley that he's played, all of this, if they can use that, yeah, they're a threat. They are a threat. But also as well... When, and I thought when, that, I must, I think we must praise their dignity as well in defeat. I thought Tony Smith was... Absolutely outstanding. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll be getting fed up with that, though, to be honest but with you. But again, I thought he was just yeah. an yeah, absolute he, he, gentleman well, in is, everything he, that he said. And he, he is on that, but, but also, as well, I think a big turning point, you know, when Sando came on, and this is what I say about Declan Patton and what he does to Matt Gidley. Declan Patton then was going to Kurt the dummy half. To Kurt Gidley. So Declan Patton was going to the dummy half, and what happened there was Gidley got caught up around the rook area for man because Sando was a maverick and he was just floating near there and everywhere. They seemed to lose the shape. And I can reassure you, if Gidley had been second man out and he just before that speculated to Martin Russell, he would have seen him, but he got tied up around that rook area. So I felt as though putting Patton at the dummy half and letting Sando roam around was a mistake for Warrington. I, I think as well with the, the Gidley situation, it, it reminded me a little bit of Danny Baderas when he first came to Leeds. Institutionalised at Newcastle, so it takes a while to throw those shackles off. I think he will be so hurt in the next season, getting towards the end of an illustrious career. He's now played in a grand final, which he hadn't done in Australia. He's played in a Challenge Cup final, which again is the most historic occasion the sport's got to offer. 
how did Badera and his career he used all that and ended up a winner? Very good indeed. Uh, we'll have a look at a few people involved. Sam Powell, an ever present for Wigan, mm. absolutely outstanding, especially given they lost McAlorum so early in the year. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a big, uh, it's a big choice uh, next year, Sean, has it? Because McAlorum will be the number one. Lula is coming back in there. So Sam Powell, is he going to be uh, the second hooker or is he going to be the second halfback? So it's a big choice there for Sean, uh, Sean because Sam Powell has been outstanding, hasn't he? He has been outstanding and filled the books of, I would say, McAlorum. So sums up the team this year, doesn't you, it? You, know, you would say he's one of the best hookers going around, so outstanding uh, for Wigan. As Never Powell. gave in. 50 tackles. Fantastic from Powell. Absolutely unbelievable effort. Um, played every week in a team that's been busted and, and Sean Wayne was saying in the press conference afterwards there were at least one week where he'd been in all week and really shouldn't have played but it's his kind of honesty and endeavour that, that Sean really admires and uh, to me Sam Powell really sums up what we're going to achieve this year that they've had to do it the hard way they've had to just keep turning up and not giving in and be there at the end of matches and uh, he, he's been the epitome of that Tell you what as well, oh Lachlan um you know, he did play a lot of minutes, but I tell you what, when he was on there, his purpose and his presence was absolutely outstanding. He tightened that rookie up there, certainly to for defence, and he allows Matty Smith as well to get that. As, as I keep going on, harping on about this with the half backs, it lets him get that little bit wider. And when O'Loughlin was on the field, you know, his kicking game was absolutely outstanding to get that good field position for Wigan. O'Loughlin may not play many minutes, but his purpose and presence was outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. Liam Farrell as well, obviously the official man of the match. Um, Astonishing work rate, a couple of really important breaks, uh, sums up the Wigan ethic. You know, the, the, Sean plays on it a lot. It, it means a lot to him that the people around him are Wigan people. Well, Liam Farrell is absolutely Wigan through and through. And uh, his desire, uh, again, his modesty for, for winning the Man of the Match award and then saying, I honestly don't know why you're giving it to me. He, he did deserve it, but was praiseworthy of all the guys around him. I think that was why Wigan won. They, they were the ultimate team on the day. Yeah, they were very, very impressive indeed. Uh, was it a good final, do you think, for the sport? I think so. I think um, we can argue all day about was it top quality. I think that both teams wanted to move the ball when they could, which, which induces errors. But I'd far rather see that than them just playing five drives and a kick. I think the fact that it, it looked as though it was going Warrington's way, Wigan found a way to pull it back, then we didn't know who was going to win it until the end. Everybody stayed in the stadium right to the last minute. You wouldn't have switched off your radio or your television if you were uh, listening to the game or watching it. I, I think that's, that goes down to success. It looked great, it felt great, and it was a good game. Mm. Scully? Yeah, good game. Yeah, enjoyed it. And I thought it was good to have it. One of the best finals we've seen for a while. So, yeah, I thought it was a good, uh, good advert for the game. Mm, excellent stuff indeed. So, uh, Wigan Warriors are champions then for 2016. Well played to them. Um, they're going to the World Club Series. The question is, who are they going to be playing? They'll play Cronulla at the DW stage. So, Cronulla are actually going to come, are they? I think they're contractually obligated. That game, yes. I think, has to take place. Yeah. Everything else, we've no idea, which is ridiculous when you think about it. I suspect that Warrington were planning to go and perhaps do some pre season in Australia anyway. They may well pick up a game, and it's possible that Hull would also go. The trouble is, I think most of the top eight teams in Australia have already planned their pre season, and it doesn't include a World Club Series game. Is it time now, maybe, that we should be contacting the uh, rich folk of places like Abu Dhabi or, you know, th those type of places and saying, look, we'll, we want to play a game in your country, will you put it on? The, we know money there is not an issue, it cuts out the travelling for, or it's a halfway point, I think I guess. We, we've just got to arrange it earlier. I mean, I think there is value in the concept. I think it would be a real shame after what, two years of having these three matches that it's ditched. Now, is that because the English teams generally, uh, apart from the odd game, aren't competitive enough? The Aussies don't value it, in which case it's another reason for us to look at our season length and our structure and what we're asking of our players. Now, this year, before the World Club Challenge, all of our teams had played two rounds of Super League. A lot of them were, you know, had injuries that they were coping with or, or were already into the, the regular week-to-week -week grind. What do we want out of the World Club Challenge? When do we want to have it? How prestigious a game is it? Let's arrange with the Aussie teams when's convenient for them. They've now got the Auckland Nines, which is very lucrative, but could they send some of their uh, junior players or their squad players to that if they know they're going to be in the World Club Challenge? We just need to get it arranged early. Is that not a fault of the Rugby League though, you know, without being overly critical, we haven't sorted out the World Club Challenge, we don't know when the magic weekend is, it, it just, you we know, must be we having one though because we're selling season tickets. 
I'm no, just asking the question. No, no. You know, we need, but, we but, need but, to but do We say that. about the World Club Championship, well, you know, when is the best time to have it? You know, is it maybe a week after an hour grand final, but you won't get that because Cronulla players will be on holiday and on the drink and all this mm. sort of thing. So when is the best time to have the World Club Championship? Well, I think when, whenever we have it, and I think probably the beginning of February might be a uh, convenient time for both competitions, we cannot have started our competition before we go into the World Club. Okay. In my opinion, I think that needs to be the focus for the teams of ours that play in it. OK, fair enough. What do you think? Uh, I want to ask you another question. I mentioned this to Scott, he laughed at me on Saturday night on the way. It's not the first time he's laughed at me this year, let's be fair. I think we should bring back Great Britain. I think... I didn't laugh at that. I didn't no, laugh you at didn't. that. I did not laugh at that. We've got this season as we have it now. I think one in every four, we should have it where the season ends after the 23 games, lose the Super 8s, the Great Britain team picked, goes down under, can play teams that are coming to the end of their season, not involved in the playoffs, get ready for a series. I think that's a, I think I, that's a I worthy... I just think there's one thing you've got to do before you get to that, and that is you've got to get a better standard of rugby and more competitive games for Scotland, Ireland and Wales, because what we don't want well, is Great Britain being England by another name. No, but this brings back to my point then, is guys that haven't been selected, we're going to pick a look at the England team mm. in a minute, but guys then think, hang on, I am going to. I can play for Ireland. I'm going to play for Ireland That's every year thing. because I know in three years' time well, I might get picked. Let's, to play let's for take Great Danny Houghton as an example. You know, it was always likely that even though he had a wonderful season, deservedly Man of Steel, that there were going to be two hookers ahead of him. Certainly Josh Hodgson. I think you yeah. know, when you come so close to winning the Dally M and you played week in week out in the NRL and just earned rave reviews, you're going to be number one. And I think Daryl Clark just offers a little bit more off the bench than, than Danny might. Danny is eligible to play for Scotland. At the moment, there's probably no reason for him to want to play for Scotland. It's been a long time. Put a potential uh, duel with him against Josh Hodgson to see who should mm. go on an Ashes tour, mm. well, people would go and watch that. Yeah, that's what I just think it could be a double edged, you know. But bonus, we need if you like. more international fixtures for those nations when would you like play Ireland, final? Scotland, and Wales. When would you play our grand final? Then? Just go straight to the top four playoff. I'd Lose go to top five. Five. Final, final, go to top five. Yeah, well, yeah, so I would give the top to team oh, the reward after twenty three rounds. Would be they also get a week off because yeah. I think that's massive at that time of year. Yeah. And then that, that top five format we had right at the very beginning of the playoffs that really works. Mm. Um, rewards again the team that comes second because they get the second chance. Um, and and then you're straight, you know, you're into then. You can have a proper international. You can have an international window during those 23 rounds because you can spread the season out a little bit. Mm. And and that's where we need to get back to proper meaningful home internationals. Uh, and then you can have internationals at the end of the season as well, culminating with say every so often. Not only do we want um, Great Britain to go on the tour, but we want the Kangaroos to come and do more of a tour than just playing. Yeah two or three uh, international matches. It'd be great to see, for example, the Kangaroos taking on the team that have won the grand final. Do you know what, lads? At times, we say, well, we're in cuckoo land. I think there, lads, we're in kangaroo land. <laughs> Never we're in an ivory tower. Oh, Never, happened. Never Let's happened. talk about England then. 24-man uh, squad name today. You can see it on your screen right now. Um, no Danny Houghton in there. We, we've seen that. Anyone else? Not Sean O'Loughlin, I guess. The big one that's not in there. Scoy, what do you make of it? Yeah, it looks like uh, Sean, uh, when he was picked as Bennett's captain, uh, Wayne Bennett said during the New England course that Oh, Lock going to stay as captain, but obviously uh, Sean's got his injuries, so maybe says, you know, I don't really think I've got to offer for yourself, so leave me out of this one, and if I'm if I'm okay for next year, I'd be delighted to come in the World Cup. Uh, Jamie Shaw, maybe, uh, you might say, okay, the whole fans will be saying, certainly with Danny Outland, but Hodgson, Clark, even Roby, you can't really. You can't really uh, debate about that. He wouldn't look out of place in England's shirt, but unfortunately he's got a bit of quality about him. But overall, the England squad, I don't think there's, uh, there's too many arguments, Martin, to be honest with you. I think it's a quality side. Good thing about it is, uh, as I say, certainly Luke Gale's in there, the way that he's playing, fully deserves that. Looks like he's going to get the number seven shirt, because he's Widdop, Williams and Brown. They're all standing far, so hopefully Luke Gale will be given that freedom, play what you see, and uh, play with that creativity, what we've been lucky for many, many years at international level. We haven't had a proper half-back since myself and Andy Gregory. Believe that, Mark, because you know why? We've come up with this silly idea, this stupid idea of playing second rowers or lose forward at number six. I call Mark Wilson bonkers. David Ware, Brian Noble, rest my case. 
Well, I did the squad look for my, you. my only disappointment is he didn't pick any heritage players I could argue with Scoey about. No, I think apart from um, maybe Alex Wormsley, perhaps, I think he's the one that could feel um, a little bit aggrieved at not being in there. I'd have had him in because I think he just offers you a little bit different off the bench. He's, he's, he's skillful as well as being big, uh, but that's quibbling. I, I'm really pleased that Johnny Lomax and Mark Percival are in it. You know, Mentioned that around the time the Dream Team were in, that I thought Lomax deserved his place. And I, again, I just think he offers something a little bit different. He's he's got everything, and and now he's got over his injury. I think it wasn't coincidental that when he came back into St Helens' team, they started firing. Um, and he's got the kind of footwork that Aussies and Kiwis really struggle to deal with. So that's good. Uh, Zach Hardacre had a good sort of seven or eight weeks over in the NRL, but I'm not sure that was enough on the season that he'd had to, to force him into contention. I think it's a pretty solid squad. We've always said that the, the forwards are a match. They are. That's a really good set of you can You can, any combination coming off the bench. I think we've got the wingers because we've only picked two. Obviously, won't want any injuries. We've got a couple of options at centre. There is a bit of versatility in the squad. I'm hopeful. I, I think with Wayne Bennett added into that mix that, that England could do something. I said to Mark earlier as well, Phil, my, my concern here is now is that what style of player we're going to come up with. What sort of philosophy is, is Wayne Bennett going to uh, He tends not to, to deal in game plans. He tends to pick players and give them the belief to go out and play. Even at Brisbane, he's never really told players how he wants them to play. So I think it, it provided that they're prepared to take on that responsibility, um, he'll give them licence. I, I don't think we're looking at five drives and a kick with, with Wayne Bennett. Mm, interesting, interesting. Mm. Mm. I'm surprised at that if, if I'm honest with you, but uh, we'll wait and see, Mark. We'll wait and see. So who's going to get the fullback berth, Ratchford or Lomax? I'd, I'd give it to Lomax. I think Ratchford again is one of these players that you can put on the bench and can cover a three or four different positions. So keep your options open. I, I just think Johnny Lomax hopefully will have a long international career because he's one of the most naturally talented players of the modern generation. Mm. Feels a bit low key. We've not the last one. We've not had an I want, argument. I wanted What's Trent Hodgkinson in there so I could justify why he was there. But why, Philip? No, just why? To argue why with do you want Aussies in England? So and, because just eh? to argue with Don't you about it. No, listen, listen. We're, we're a serious show. People, no. you know, people, people realise we know what we're talking about. I th I think so why do we want Aussies? I, no, we don't. I think, well, we don't because the 24 people we've got there, right. I think this year can do a job. I'm pleased for Scott Taylor. I think he's had a great year. He's, he's, we, we say mm. often, don't we, that we, we don't pick on form. We pick on reputation. Mm. That's the squad that's picked on yeah, form, thanks. I think. What about your captain? James Green would be my captain. Sam Burgess for me. He'll be your captain. Because I think Sam's going to be on the field for longer. Um, oh, yeah, and right. I think he's got, yeah, again, yeah. that... Purpose, from, even presence. from a media point of view, to have Sam coming back and being the captain and doing all the media stuff, I think that would be really good for the sport. Have we made enough of that? Not yet, but he's not here till Friday. So I would hope that from sort of next Monday, he's fronting up all the media and taking yeah, on the responsibility. He'll be the big uh, sales, sales guy, the promotion guy. Well, he's got to be. And I've, again, you know, we, we say sort of a bit tongue in cheek, it's a shame that the, the headlines from the grand final of Josh Charles is moving on to a different sport. Well, let's put the boot on the other foot. Let's make sure that Sam Burgess comes over here and says, I only ever wanted to play rugby league. This is the game for me. And being captain of a country, I couldn't be proud. Mm. I'll take that. Yeah. Is someone going to tell him to say that, though? He's a smart guy. He is. Yeah. He's, he's from near Bradford, so it goes without saying, doesn't it? I see Bradford tweeted that congratulations to the seven players that came through their ranks. Mm. I'd have kept a little bit quiet about that because it just shows how far they might have fallen. OK. You know, a little, little bit of lead drive over there, it's just no, building up now. never mentioned it? that, never mentioned yeah, So you wanted, show. Oh, you wanted Mark, some controversy Mark, for the Mark, end of the hold show? On, hold on, he's not a Leeds fan, he's an LKR fan. <laughs> He's not a Leeds, <laughs> <laughs> Leeds, Leeds in his second team Bob, now. Bobby Blair's he's, he's, he's an Ilkey fan. It's all going well. Lola Blair, they've all resigned. What, what sort of culture will we have now with that England set We've got Wayne Bennett, we've got Peacock as the team manager. What sort of culture do you think he's going to bring? Uh, a winning culture. Do you think it'll be a wrestling room in for England, lads? Uh, it's the best wrestling room you've ever seen. A wrestling room as well, I mean. What about a wrestling room? We're going to get you between the wrestling room, Phil. <laughs> I <laughs> fancy your chances. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, he's brought that culture to Ulkey R, hasn't he? But, and I say they've got Paul Anders in there, Paul Wellington, Dennis Bess is on there. We can't fault the coaching staff, so it's all down to the players now. It is. Are they going to get... Will they get to the final and will they win it? I hope so. Uh, I don't have an issue with I don't have an issue with the forward pack, outside backs. We've got plenty of pace. It's all about the creativity for me, Mark. If if Wayne Bennett's uh, as Phil's mentioned that uh, he'll give us that bit of freedom, let Luke Gale play as what he sees, then yeah, we've we've a chance of getting to the final and uh, who knows, maybe win it. 
Good stuff. Uh, that's pretty much just done. We have got a chance, though, um, to give you a chance to win a copy of this uh, Judas. No, it's not about scoring. No, no. <laughs> this is uh, the other Judas, uh, Paul Cook. Uh, the story of Paul Cook, written by uh, himself and Adrian Durham. I've had the chance to read it. Fabulous. Fantastic book. Uh, Cookie's going to be in your shop next Monday, isn't it, I think? Fabulous book. Great cloak. Um, really well written. Obviously, not just about games that he played in, it's about all of the underlying issues. Extremely honest. Uh, well worth a read. Very much so. Uh, you can win a copy with the last tackle. Basically, when you've watched it, just send us a tweet at RL on RY. Say, I want Cookie's book. We'll draw the winner out at the end of the week. Uh, are you going to bring a book out, Judas? Well, we always have to be called Judas too now, or what? I've already brought mine out. You're reading mine at the moment. It's called Tries the Limit, so uh, you're reading at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, I am, yeah. yeah. Are you clearing it in as you go? Yeah, I've joined all... Someone joined all the dots before I got it, We'll so. be for sure. You'll enjoy the Dougie Lawton part. Yeah, oh, I will do. I'm sure I will. I'm yeah, sure I will. Uh, but it is a great read. I, I would read it. It's, uh, yeah, no, it's bad. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it myself, reading it. Yes, yeah, same yeah. Well, hold yes. on. Uh, 1850. 18.99, you're You can have it. You've read it. Second, uh, second <laughs> hand. A deal, a fiver. <laughs> a deal, a fiver. <laughs> uh, Cookie might be watching, in which case you're in trouble. Uh, I want Cookie's book on Twitter, at RL on RY. We've got uh, a copy to give away. Uh, and you can also win further copies at Radio underscore Yorkshire as well. Uh, boys, that's it. A season has gone by. We're all still alive. That's a good thing. No one's damaged each other too badly. Um, quickly, how would you assess the season, Phil? Overall, the standard's been poor. It hints at the fact that we're playing too much rugby. The structure does need looking at for that reason and that reason alone. But the last three weeks were sensational, as they were the year before. Yeah, exactly. Just what, what Phil said. The quality of week in and week out, not being there. But when it comes to the business end of the season, sheer quality. It has, indeed. That's not a comment anyone's been labelling at our performance this year. <laughs> but never mind. Thanks to everyone that's watched. We do appreciate all. We do appreciate all your feedback, good and bad. We are working on, uh, on Scoy's image and... Uh, Hopefully, come next season when he's been through pre season, he'll be looking a little bit better. Uh, on that note, it's <laughs> we'll been harsh, the last tackle. Thank you for watching. <laughs>this is a song I normally see when the games are pretty rubbish in Super League and it, it goes something like this I feel it in my fingers I feel it in my toes love is all around me it's everywhere I go you know I love you I always will my mind's made up by the way that I feel the game of rugby is poor at times. Scroll score is singing, makes up for the use. Oh yeah. Thank you very much to the Radio Yorkshire listeners. That is why, that is why he needs sacking, quite clearly. <laughs>